Well done. You've now completed the Reading Skills Workshop for International ESOL. I hope that you found the workshop informative and enjoyable. I hope you also noticed that in doing the workshop itself, you were actually performing some of the task types that your learners will do. So you were reading at word and sentence level. You were reading for gist. You were reading for specific meaning. You were reading between the lines. These workshops are intended to replicate what learners go through and to help us to apply some of what's in there in our teaching. Let's take a look, a closer look, at some of the main points and some of the main teaching tips that I can offer you from the reading workshop. I think the first thing to say is that reading is not passive. Uh, reading is a very, very active skill and a set of sub-skills. And one of the things that learners and teachers frequently find difficult is skim reading. We talk a lot about skim and scan. Um, by skim, we mean reading generally for gist. Scan is reading to recognise words and phrases that give us specific answers. We also at high levels read in greater detail. We read for inference. In the experience of many teachers, Learners are quite happy to read to try and understand every word. In a test, they don't always have time for that, and it isn't always necessary. What they tend to overlook is skim reading. They're not prepared to read quickly, just for a minute or two, just for the general meaning, and if only they do, that will help them to find detail. Um, I've asked colleagues for ideas to promote skim reading, and here's one that you might like to try. It brings in the use of technology, and it doesn't have to be an um, interactive whiteboard. It can be an old overhead projector, whatever you've got at your disposal. The idea is that the teacher puts a text up on the wall, on the smart screen, and gives the learners a time limit. Now, the time limit can actually be implemented because you can fade to grey, or you can cover up part of the text, or you can remove it from the learner's view. They have no option but to read briefly and very much for an overview. Another tip. Sometimes when you set a skim read task, you don't want people to feel they've got it wrong. That's not the point of a skim read. The point of a skim read is to orientate ourselves, to find out what things are about in general terms. A very, very simple idea. Don't just set a task like the writer enjoyed the holiday, preface it with, do you think the writer enjoyed the holiday? Try that in your class, it actually works, because people may think yes, may think no, they've got their own opinion based on the text, but nobody feels that they've got it wrong before they even begin. During the workshop, you have read for gist, you have read for detail. As a teacher, you probably didn't need to use a dictionary. Perfectly entitled to, and at higher levels, I think most of us would. But don't forget, your learners can use a dictionary. And a dictionary is not for looking up every word, it's for checking keywords and making sure that meaning is there. It's well worth bringing that into your teaching to help people's skills generally. Um, we must also remember that when we're teaching for International ESOL, we are helping learners to prepare for a test. The result is very important. We don't want people just to jump through hoops, but test technique can help. And one of the things that learners need to do is to make sure that they don't spend too much time on the reading. And if we look back at the workshop, I hope you'll see that what we've done is try and encourage people to develop the skills which will save time. They don't need to spend forever on a text. They don't need to understand everything. Um, these days, teachers have access to so much reading material. Please remember that we have the teaching support materials with lots of the tasks that you'll find in the tests, but you can also download text from the internet. We have so much access these days. What more to be said about reading? Well, I think it's also worth saying to learners, as um, a little bit of learner practice, why not use a highlighter pen? When you're doing a test or when you're reading a text generally, 
make a note of where the key points occur. So, over to you. Enjoy using the Tassler techniques in your teaching and hope they'll be successful for your learners and for you. Thank you.